All right, welcome back to Photoshop. So today we're gonna take a look at smart objects and how they can make your workflow completely non-destructive. So the cool thing about smart object is some aspects of Photoshop are not non-destructive, meaning that once you apply them to the image, it physically changes your image data and you're stuck with it. Now, you always have history that you can go back in time and remove it, but if you were to save that image and go back, you would not be able to change what you did. However, in a smart object, that's completely different because a smart object does everything non-destructively so you can turn it on, turn it off, even after you save it or go back in and change the amount of it at any time. So a lot of people don't know that you can actually create a smart object straight from Adobe Camera Raw. Now normally when you wanna open your image down here, what you would do is just go ahead, click open image, it would take this file and open straight into Photoshop. Now at this point, this image is not a smart object. So if you wanted to change this to a smart object, you could come out here, right click, and hit convert to smart object. Then Photoshop is gonna do its thing and is going to convert this image to a smart object. And you can see it's a smart object because right down here in this lower right hand corner is a little symbol. And this little symbol is telling you that, hey, this is a smart object. So we're going to go ahead and close this image out. Go ahead, open it back up. Now you can create any image from Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom into a smart object. So right down here, you will notice, remember that it normally says open image. However, if I hold the shift key, notice it changes to open object. Now, if I click on this, it's gonna open this image as a smart object that we can see down here, not a regular file. If you wanna change any image from Adobe Camera Raw, you just hold shift and click open object instead of open image. The next thing that we're gonna take a look at is this orange. This orange has been cut out and that's fine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna create a new document. And we're just gonna use something for the web. And I'm gonna come over here to the orange and I'm just gonna drag it over to this new layer here. And you can see we've got this giant picture of an orange. And right over here, we've got that layer, which is this orange. This document at this point is not a smart object because we haven't converted it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hit Command J and I'm going to come out here to the right. I'm going to come out here in this layer and I'm going to right click. And I'm going to say convert to smart object. And we can see down here now that this image, the top one, the smart one is a smart object and the one below it is not a smart object. So to explain how this works, I'm going to move these two oranges so they're a little bit apart. So we can see there's two different layers here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to scale these images. The cool thing about a smart object, it doesn't matter how small and then how big you make the image, it always retains its original size. Well, why? Because it's its own document. If you come down here and you double click on this layer, it brings up layer style. But watch what happens if you double click on a smart object layer it brings up the original document file from that image. I'm gonna go ahead and close that out for a second. We're gonna go back to our image. So why is that beneficial to us in photography? Well, when we are adjusting or making adjustments on here, everything can be non-destructive. And a lot of stuff can be non-destructive that is not normally non-destructive like transformation. Let's take a look at how that works. So what I'm gonna do is I've got these two images and I'm going to hold shift and select both. And I'm gonna hit command T and I'm just gonna zoom out so you can see. So now we have the transformation box. I'm gonna hold alt and I'm gonna make these images teeny tiny. And then I'm going to apply them. Now the reason that I made them small is so you can see the effect. When you transform a smart object, 
it scales it, but it doesn't change any of the original information in the file. When you scale or transform a regular image, it actually completely resizes it and saves it. So now let's go back in and say, hey, I don't want that to be that small. And now we're going to resize both of those back out big. And I'm going to hit return. You'll notice that the smart object right here has retained its original image quality. We haven't lost any quality, but look at the image below it. It's completely out of focus and falling apart. Well, why? Because we resized this to a teeny tiny size and then enlarged it and we lost all image quality. So at times when you're working on a composite or multiple images, you might be constantly resizing stuff because you're not really sure how big or how small you want those items to be. Making something a smart object is a good thing to do because it allows you to retain the original size and make that transformation non-destructive. So what we're gonna do is we're going to just go ahead and delete this layer because that layer is no good. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna copy these layers. And there's a couple different ways that you can copy or duplicate a smart object layer. One is you can simply just hit Command J and it's going to do a smart object. The other way is to grab your move tool and hold the option key and drag. And that's gonna create another smart object. So what I'm gonna do once again is I'm gonna select all three by holding shift, hit Command T, hold my Alt key. I'm gonna scale these so they're a little bit smaller and we can see them. And I will zoom in a little bit and then we'll apply this crop. So we're gonna have the first image up here and we'll put this one down on the bottom, the middle one in the middle, and the bottom one on the top. Now the cool thing about a smart object is once you have duplicated them, let's say that we wanna change all these images to blue. Well, we could just come in here and make in some sort of adjustment layer. However, we can double click on a smart object layer and open the original image. Since this is just a normal image, we can actually make an adjustment layer. And then we can come in here and change the color of our orange to something like blue. Now, if we go back to the file right now, nothing's changed. You need to save this change to have it be applied. So remember, we just changed it to one layer, but when we go back to this file, notice all three layers have been changed to blue. That's because we just copied those layers. And since we copied them, they're all the same, and it's applying this adjustment to all three layers. Well, what happens if we decide we don't like blue? It's really easy. Quit that. We're gonna go back into the smart object layer. Because this is just an adjustment layer, we can turn that off, hit save, go back to our smart object, and bam, just like that, we are back to orange. This is non-destructive, which is absolutely wonderful inside of Photoshop. So then people are gonna always ask me, well, what happens if you only wanna turn one of the oranges blue? Really easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here to the middle layer, which is the smart object, I'm going to right click once again, but this time I'm gonna choose Smart Object Via Copy. Once again, we have a Smart Object Via a Copy, and I will just move this orange out here, but this time I'm gonna double click that layer, and we're gonna turn this blue layer back on. I'm gonna hit Command S for Save, and then when I go back to the oranges, notice the copy layer changed to blue, but the other two stayed orange. Well, why? Because we did that as a smart object via a copy. So Photoshop identifies that as a different series of smart objects and lets us independently adjust them. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and delete these two layers right now, and I will just move this over here into the center. The next thing that we can do with smart objects is we can apply what's called smart filters. And so if you come up here, notice that you even have a selection that if you wanna turn an image into a smart object to start using smart filters, what does that mean? Well, that's pretty easy. We'll come over here, we'll grab this fruit, we'll drag it back over to this file. So right now this is not a smart object, but if I come up here and I say convert for smart filters, it's gonna give me this little disclaimer and then you can end up turning this off 
and say OK, and it's automatically going to turn this into a smart object. So now we can start applying smart filters to it. We're just going to go ahead and delete this layer because we're not going to use it. We're going to go ahead and stay with this blue one. And I'll zoom in here so you can see what's going on. And we can come up here and start using filters. So let's say I want to use a Gaussian blur and blur this photo out. I can go ahead and hit Gaussian blur and blur this out so we can't see it. Now, normally when you apply a filter to an image, it is destructive. It automatically applies it. Now, you can always go back in history. But if I was to quit this file and then open it back up, I would not be able to change that. However, a smart filter can be changed at any time. I can come in here and turn that filter off, or I can come down here to Gaussian Blur, double click on Gaussian Blur, adjust it because I have too much blur, and then reapply it. And this is infinite. You can do this at any time because it's non destructive. And you have a mask, so you could easily come in here and grab your brush and paint some black that would hide the Gaussian blur from this portion of the image. And if you just want to completely get rid of that, you can easily just go ahead and delete this stuff or turn it off to remove that smart filter. And you can do this with any of these filters. You can also do it with some adjustments. One adjustment that isn't over here that is an adjustment layer is shadows and highlights. We can go to image adjustments and they come down here to shadows and highlights. Now shadows and highlights by default, there's no way to make this non-destructive. However, if you create a smart object and then apply this filter and we'll just make an adjustment so it does something and then hit OK, you'll notice that right here we have that shadows and highlights that we can turn on and off, Gaussian blur on and off turn on the shadows and highlights and adjust that image non-destructively, unlike if we were to just do this as a regular layer. Well, that's a few different ways you can use smart objects in your photography to make your workflow non-destructive. And this is especially effective when you're doing composites and things like that. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below and as always, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>